Hi, welcome to the Royale C++ video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll give you an introduction to the main Royale C++ API features. I'll show you how to build the Royale C++ sample applications. And I'll show you how to build a custom Royale C++ application. Below are the main features of the Royale C++ API that we will cover in this video. So starting with the camera manager. The camera manager is responsible for detecting compatible cameras which are connected to your system. And it's also responsible for creating iCamera device objects for those cameras. In the example below, we request a list of connected cameras from camera manager and then create an iCamera device object from the first camera detected. An iCamera device object is the main interface for interacting with the time of flight camera. It can only be created by the camera manager. It's through this interface that you can set the use case the exposure time, you can start or stop the stream, and you can also register listeners for image and status data. It's important to note that before you use this interface, you have to initialize the iCam device, like in the example below. So here are two examples of how to work with use cases. The first example shows you how to get a list of available use cases, and the second example shows you how to set one. So a camera device has two exposure modes, either automatic or manual. With exposure mode set to automatic, the camera device configures an optimal exposure time based on the current scene. With exposure mode set to manual, you can configure the exposure time to a static value. But please note that each use case has a minimum and maximum exposure time, and the exposure time you set must be within that range. So below is an example for how to check the exposure limits and also how to set an exposure time manually. So this is a list of data types or image types which you can receive from a camera device by registering the appropriate listener. A depth data is a dense 3D point cloud, which also includes the gray value and confidence. A sparse point cloud is a sparse 3D point cloud, which ignores invalid pixels and also includes a confidence. The IR image represents an 8-bit mono IR image. The depth image just includes the Z distance and a confidence. And the depth IR image is a combination of the IR image and depth image. So here's an example of how to get image data from listeners. Step one is to create a class which inherits from the listener providing the data you want. So in this case, we inherit from the iDepthData listener interface to get depth data. Next, we need to provide an override for the onNewData function, which gets called anytime a new depth data is available. Step two is to create an instance of your new listener and register it with the camera device. You can get status data from the camera in a similar way to image data by using listeners. You first have to create a class to inherit from the appropriate listener interface, and then you have to register that listener to the camera device. Okay, so for this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build the Royale C++ sample applications. For my setup, I've got an Ubuntu 20.04 desktop. Connected to it, I've got a Flex 2 USB camera with the USB driver already installed and I've already downloaded the Royale SDK. To build, I'm going to need to download and install CMake as well as the C++ compiler. Optionally, I can download OpenCV to build the OpenCV sample. So here I am on an Ubuntu 20.04 desktop. I have the Flex2 camera connected with the USB driver already installed. I also have the Royale SDK here on my desktop. To build the samples, I've installed CMake a C++ compiler. I've also installed OpenCV to build the OpenCV sample application. The Royale C++ sample applications can be found in the Royale SDK. So for me, that's here on my desktop. And the samples can be found here in the samples folder. And now if we go into the CPP folder, I can see a list of folders, one for each of the sample applications we can build. Inside each one, there is a CPP file, which is the source for the application, as well as the cmakelist.txt file, so we can build it. To build a sample, I will first create a project using CMake. I can set the source directory to one of the sample folders in the Royal SDK. And for the first sample, let's just build sample retrieve data. Next, I need to create a build directory for this project. For that, let's just create a new folder on my desktop and call it sample retrieve data build. Okay, so let's press configure. These look good. And then generate. 
Okay, that looks good. Now I need to open a terminal and navigate to the sample retrieve data build directory I just created. Here I can build a sample by calling make. Okay, so the build was successful and now I can see the sample retrieve data application in the same directory. So now let's just run it. As you can see here, sample retrieve data is a simple application that just prints an ASCII text representation of a depth image to the terminal. Here you can see the shape of my hand as I waved it in front of the camera. Okay, so let's build another sample. Since I've installed OpenCV, I can also build the Royale OpenCV sample application. So let's open CMake again. This time I'll set the source directory to the OpenCV sample in the Royale SDK. And for the build directory, let's create a new folder on my desktop called sample opencv build. Okay. Now I'll press configure. Looks good. And generate. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now I need to open a terminal and navigate to that build directory. So for me, that's on my desktop under sample open cv dash build. Now let's call make to build. All right, that build was successful. And now let's run it. So here we have a representation of the depth and gray image from Royale. The images have been converted so they can be used in OpenCV and is displayed using OpenCV's high GUI module. All right, so in this part of the tutorial, I will show you how to create a Royale C++ application from scratch. I'll be using the same setup as in the previous tutorial. So let's build a new Royale application. Here on my desktop, I have a folder called Royale App. Inside, I prepare sources for a very basic C++ project with a single CPP file and a CMake list file to build it. Let's take a look at the CMake list file. Here at the top, I set the minimum CMake version and the project name. Next, I define a single executable called Royale app, which is built from one CPP file, main.cpp. Lastly, I tell CMake to find the Royale library and header files, which are used to build Royale app. Now let's take a look at main.cpp. As you can see, this application is very small right now and just 34 lines of code. To quickly go over what it does so far, at the top, I include iostream so that my application can print some messages to the console. Below that is a top level Royale header file, which gives us access to the Royale API. Moving on to the main function, I start by creating an instance of camera manager, and then I use it to check for available cameras. Then I use camera manager to create an instance of iCamera device using the first camera detected. On my system, this is just a Flex 2 USB camera. After the camera device is created, I make sure to initialize the camera before interacting with it any further. Finally, I query the camera device for available use cases and print them to the console. Okay, so far this is a very basic starter application that I will build upon throughout this video. So let's first build this minimal project and run it. Step one is to generate a project using CMake. I'll set the source directory to the location of the CMake list file for my application. For me, that's on my desktop under the Royale folder. And then I'll need to specify a build directory. For that, I'll create a new directory on my desktop. I'll call this directory Royale app dash bill. One important step here is to let CMake know where to find Royale. To do that, I need to set a CMake variable. So I'll press add entry. And the name of this variable will be CMake underscore prefix underscore path in all caps. The type will be a path. And the value will be a location in the, S in the Royale SDK called share. So for me, that's on my desktop. I set it to the share folder because this is where royale-config.cmake is located. This lets CMake properly locate the Royale library and header file. Okay, so now I can press configure and the default options look good for me. Then I press generate. Step two is to build the application using make. To build my app, I'll open a terminal and navigate to its build directory. For me, that's on my desktop. 
at Royal app dash build. Then to build, I'll call me. Okay, so that build was successful. And let's run it. As you can see here, a camera with this ID was detected and a camera device was created for that camera. And this is the list of use cases available for that camera. So let's now modify this application to capture images. Going back to the main.cpp file from earlier, I'll start by setting the camera's use case to mode 9 30 FPS. Now I also want to receive images from this camera, so I need to create a listener. At the top, let's create a new listener class. I want my listener to receive dense 3D point cloud images, which I know is available in Royale's depth data image type. To get this image type, I need my listener to inherit from the Royale iDepth data listener interface. Then I'll need to provide an override for the on new data function, which accepts a pointer to a const depth data. Now I expect this function to get called when a new image is available. Earlier, I set the camera's use case to mode 9 30 FPS, so this function can get called up to 30 times per second. For now, let's just print a simple message to the console stating that we've received an image. Let's also include a counter so we know how many images we've received. And let's increment this counter. Now, to use this new listener class, I need to do two things. The first thing I need to do is create an instance of my new listener class. Next, I need to register the listener with the camera device. So now I've done a very minimal configuration of the camera device and can begin capturing. To do that, I will call camera devices start capture function. To stop capturing, I'll call camera device stop capture. Now, I'd like to give the camera device a couple seconds to capture some images. To do that, I can sleep the main thread after calling start capture and before calling stop capture. This thread sleep for is defined in the thread header of the C++ standard library, which I will include at the top. Okay, so let's now rebuild this application. I'll call make again, and now let's run it. As you can see, the camera device captured for roughly two seconds and 60 point cloud images were received during that time. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more interesting in our listener class. And instead of simply printing that we received an image, let's save the point cloud image to a PLY file. A PLW file is a file used to store three-dimensional data, like the points of a point cloud from 3D scanners. The PLW file can then be used in third-party visualization software like MeshLab. Going back to main.cpp, I'll modify the MyListener class from earlier, and this time I'll add a new function called writePLY. WritePLY will accept two parameters, a file name for the PLY file to save, and a pointer to depth data, which contains a point cloud. To use this function, we'll also need to include the fstream header. Now let's modify the onNewData function to also call the new writePLY function. So I'll first create a new stream which represents the name of the PLY file. And I'll set it to the value of counter and also give it a .PLY file extension. Now I can call writePLY and I'll pass it the PLY file name and the pointer data. Okay, now let's rebuild this application. That was successful, so let's run it. We received 28 images this time, and we created a PLY file for each one. Taking a look in this directory, I can now see the new PLY files. So that we can visualize the point cloud saved in each PLY file, I downloaded MeshLab, so let's start that up. And at the top, I'll press File and Import Mesh. Here, I can select one of the PLY files we just generated. So if I go to Desktop, Royale App Dash Build, and I will just load the very first point cloud. So here you can see a point cloud representing a profile of my face, as well as parts of the room behind me. You can explore the other features of MeshLab if you like, but that concludes the end of this tutorial.